I was going to scream to the back just for you guys back there. Okay. Um, the first thing you want to do is um, get yourself an IT job with about three years of experience. Um, able to implement and maintain information security. Uh, things like know what an access control list is. You know, real difficult stuff. Um, basically, you're not really required to run assessments or anything else. You'll have uh, seniors usually take care of that for you. Requires uh, one or more of the entry level certifications. Pay is between about 25k and 35k. I just pulled this off of Career.com, so it's uh, it's kind of a good uh, compared to a lot of people. Okay, we'll go down. Okay, here's some of the entry level certifications. By the way, these slides are going to be available um, at the end of these slides. Actually, yes, the real slides will have links to all the different certifications if you decide to go for these certifications. Um, usually, it's one or two or three in this level. We have uh, the ones that I would suggest, by the way. Um, the GX are real good. The Security Plus is uh, well recognized. A lot of these others aren't as well recognized within the uh, community. If you put it on your resume, people are not going to take it as seriously. Um, a lot of these organizations, like True Secures, had theirs uh, out for eight years, and it's still not as recognized as um, most certifications. Okay, go down. Okay, some real fun ones you definitely want to get involved in. Um, firewall administration, checkpoint. Has a good certification on that. If you decide you want to be an auditor, GAC has an ISO 17799. Yes, we in the security field are acronym plenty. Yes. Uh, let's see, audits. Microsoft certified with Security Plus and Semantics product. Next. Okay, other skills. <laughs> you got to read and write. Um, participate in users group. This is real important. This is where we learn things off the job so we can get better and make more money and have more fun. Um, Lease and associates. Yeah, you got to do it. Hate to say it. Um, attend some of the regional uh, security conferences and <coughs> hacker cons. This would be considered a regional hacker con slash security conference. Um, also, start learning Linux, uh, Unix, Microsoft, and iOS. Honestly, a good security professional will know all four of them well enough to be able to get on, um, abuse it, or fix it, and move on. So if you're a uh, Microsofty, uh, you need to learn Linux. If you've only done Cisco, you need to learn the operating systems. And, oh, yeah. Start, start to learn to code in Perl, C, Java, Shell Script, whatever it is. Start learning to code. Coding is real important. It's also real important to understand how it works because uh, there might be days you want to go in and modify things. Woohoo! Go ahead. Um, intermediate, IT professional. Uh, typically, somebody that's been in the IT world for about three to six years, and again, not have to be doing security. Uh, implement and maintain security systems, and you have to be able to assist with the design and security policy type stuff. Policies, by the way, are real easy, which is basically words that define you're not supposed to do this and you're not supposed to do that. Not in a lot of detail, but um, those are, by the way, available at sans.org if you want some real quick default ones to learn. Um, be able to conduct a security audit. Um, as a, as a secondary, as uh, somebody that's uh, supporting a group. Um, know some of the technology entry level. Um, one or more of the entry level um, certs. This is the going pay. Is this okay pay for you guys? Um, 30 to uh, 55K. Uh, some places it's higher. It's like 65, 70 up in the northeast California. Here's some of the certs you want to take a look at. Um, CIW security analyst, um, CISA if you want to become an auditor, which is always interesting, uh, CISSP, woo, yes, how many CISSPs do we have in the room? Oh my god, they're growing, <laughs> congratulations. Um, uh, checkpoint certification specifically for firewall and also the GIAC um, firewall, I would highly recommend the SANS GIAC if you can get your company to sponsor your way to go there. Um, it's not only a class, but it's an adventure. Typically, if you go to the, go to the classes, uh, it starts at 8, 
It finishes at five. It's typically a five to six day class. There's typically events every night at sands.org. No, I don't work for sands. Don't own stock in sands, but uh, they're a great organization. Um, their particular certification, if you decide to go after any of the certifications from sands, you have to write a paper mm. on one of the topics, and then you have to take a test and you get an official certification. But it's something you want to consider. Next. You've changed it. Ah, yes, the forensics. Um, if you're in law enforcement, these are the two that a lot of the law enforcement guys are going after right now. These are fun. Like, I don't know, how do you find all those hidden things that Microsoft doesn't really want to tell you about? I don't know, the caching file? Do you guys uh, play with Evidence Eliminator? And seen all the fun things that are still in your system after three weeks? Um, incident handler. Um, a lot of corporations are looking for people to do incident handling right now. Um, that's basically a bad guy, good guy, whatever, gets in. How do you deal with it? How do you call in law enforcement? How do you protect it so the forensics guys can come and fix it? Um, intrusion detection, which is pretty much the burglar alarm of the networks or the systems. And also Unix admin. Windows admin, yes, they definitely need help. They have two certifications. Did you notice Linux only had one? Oh, sorry. Um, both of these are real good. I prefer the GX certification myself. Uh, the Windows seems to uh, forget a few things, but you know you kind of expect that. The network certifications, um, the Cisco certification. I've taught uh, one of these classes. It was pretty lightweight compared to what I'm used to. I'd probably take a look at the system and network architecture. Really great because it goes through how to lock down your routers, your switches, your VPNs, all the other fun stuff. And also RSA, if you start getting into using uh, any RSA keys. Does anybody have an RSA key? I Mine just ran out of power. Anybody have an RSA key? No? Okay. It's a little tiny thing about this big that puts random numbers up. But anyway, uh, certification on how to manage and implement that, that's becoming a big issue. Um, AOL is implementing that right now so that uh, users don't have to use passwords. They use the RSA key. There you go. A couple other intermediate certifications. Saint. Saint is a uh, vulnerability scanner. Symantec, you knew that they were going to be there. And also Tivoli. There you go. Other skills, yes, you need to read better. <laughs> Speak in small groups. Um, uh, consider learning a little bit about project management, uh, participation in uh, professional groups. We're going to talk about some details on that. Uh, um, get yourself an associate's degree. Again, Learn more about every operating system that's out there. Learn even more about code. Go ahead. Okay, credentials. Are these better fees? Would you like to be making between 50 and 95? Good money. Okay. Um, this is really the advance. It's typically about seven or more years. Um, if you have higher, if you have say a bachelor's or master's degree, this can make it faster to get to some of these. Um, understand information security, design implementation, be part of a team to actually implement some of this stuff. Let's see, and hold uh, some of the advanced certifications. Some of the advanced certifications include button. Okay. Um, the certified manager security expert for uh, pretty much the checkpoint stuff. The security expert, which is a high level for GIAC. Um, ISAs, which is um, another one, Tivoli. Yeah. Yes, I spent a lot of time figuring out certifications. Can you tell? Uh, if you want to be a uh, senior security administrator, consultant, these are definitely two that you have. Uh, these two guys up in the front, if you have questions about those two certs, um, I guess you guys have the, you got the AP? Okay. We got the AP and going for the EP. Okay. Um, <laughs> the ISSM, um, P, and if you want to basically be physical security, yes. Would you believe it? There's even certifications for those guard people. They don't know it most of the time, but there is. Okay, um, other skills, very good reading, Sp speaking in uh, small and medium-sized groups, training, um, this TQM, if you're going to work in corporate America right now, 
Quality Assurance, Six Sigma, you're going to hear those words. Those are important to learn what the heck they do. Uh, participate in security groups, participate in conferences, bachelors are better. Okay. okay, specialist. Are these better pays, 85K to 225? Okay, that's going great. It's nice to be there. Um, Ten or more years in the, in the industry. Uh, six or more years in, uh, with IT experience. This is real important when you're asked to uh, step up. Focus on information security. We're going to talk about some classes you guys can take to, to get that in play. Uh, some knowledge about forensics. Um, you guys can read slides. It's not, okay. Here's all the specialist certifications. Um, if you notice, most of them are forensics type certifications here. This is typically for people who want to do work for law enforcement or corporations doing forensics. That's becoming a big issue. When a corporation has decided, wow, security is important, usually the first thing they do is they get a security, they get a firewall administrator, and then they suddenly go, oh, we got to have a burglar alarm. So they get a intrusion detection administrator, and they go, oh, if a bad guy gets in, we got to figure out how he got in. And then they actually hire forensics uh, administrator or analyst and most corporations have anywhere uh, the the big 50 have anywhere from one to I know like um, one organization has 12 forensics an, um, analysts mm -hmm. intelligence ooh isn't this fun certified counter espionage and information security manager doesn't that sound like fun um, penetration te tester ethical hacker uh, auditor, CIA, uh, and um, web security administrator. Okay, click. Okay, wireless. Um, you have your wireless, don't you? Okay. Um, guy up in the front has his uh, wireless. Is expert or professional yet? Okay. Um, Cisco certification and also RSA. Click. Okay. Good bachelors, uh, participate in groups, speak at conferences, project management, blah, blah. Okay. Schools. Ooh, this is the fun thing. Does anybody go to college today? Does anybody would like to have the government pay you to get a certification and a degree in security? Did you know the um, after 9-11, the um, government decided, ooh, We've got to create these things called centers of excellence. So what they did was they went out to all the universities, and they said, we want you to create curriculum specifically to teach people how to do information assurance. Information assurance is the short term for the government's information security. No big deal. Um, the NSA is the one that funds it. Currently, there are 51 centers. Here are five of them that I put up just randomly. Here's the cool part. Do you guys see the bottom? Scholarship grants, or uh, scholarships, grants, and government jobs when you complete the certification. I have uh, one of our friends that we helped um, at Fuel um, get his uh, NSA. Basically, he'll be able to go all the way to a doctorate's degree, and they'll guarantee a job either at the NSA or one of the other fun three-letter organizations. So if you decide you want to go to a job that you can't be outsourced? Because you can't really outsource security jobs, could you? Ooh, interesting idea. God knows they're trying. Yes, you got, you're right. Um, okay, some additional training. This is free stuff. If you guys aren't taking advantage of this, you're crazy. SANS has webcasts, um, one hour to two hour webcast every two weeks on every topic possible, everything from Forensics, log processing, hardening Microsoft products, Linux products, router problems, top 20 vulnerabilities and how to mitigate those vulnerabilities. Lots of stuff. They probably have about 60 or 70 videos out there you can uh, grab from any internet connection. Definitely a must. Um, that was the archives. This one right here, the webcast, they have live webcasts that you can participate in every two weeks. Get involved in that. It's free. Another one is uh, the DEF CON and the Black Hat slides. Yes, you can see me and actually some of my crew at DEF CON last year. 
Actually, me two years ago. Okay, I'll, I'll straighten that up before you guys harass me about that. Um, these are great presentations. You can see people like FX. You can see Dan Kaminsky. You can see a lot of the uh, people that are discussing security issues. Definitely a must. Um, free places for text. If you want to um, read up, CCC Cure. Great documentation if you want to become a Security Plus or CISSP. But great documentation on how to learn to become a security professional. Wonderful. Do you, do you agree? Okay. Um, CI Security will teach you how to lock down systems at the NSA level. Definitely a must. Read the documentation. Yes, the difference between is an example of router configuration from Cisco, 35 pages, to the NSA lockdown guide and process, 280 pages. Who do you think is more serious? Hmm. Okay. Um, Packet Storm, yes, that's almost a daily for me. And if I know a lot of my crew. Net Security, uh, Get Certified is a great place to keep up with security certifications, changes in the test, things like that. Um, the CERT, uh, the CERT and US CERT have lots of great information about security. What is the best practice to, I don't know, implement a VPN? How do you implement SSH securely? It's up there. What are the guidelines for government to deal with? Has anybody been dealing with Sorbanes-Oxley? Okay. Um, best, uh, best practices on implementing Sorbanes-Oxley, HIPAA, a lot of the re um, legal regulations, great stuff. SANS again. SANS has got this great reading room, about 2,000 documents on about every topic possible, everything from social engineering to wireless hacking, you name it. And also the NIST, the NIST is now taking um, with what is referred to as their 800 series. They're now taking the dominant role in defining security um, preferences and security policies and practices for the U.S. government. Interestingly enough, how many companies do business with the government? Pretty much all of them, right? Some way or another because you have to pay your taxes and such. Um, over the next five years, we're going to see NIST is going to require you to be certified at one of their NIST levels. So be aware of that. A um, few tricks. Do you know if you're a student at a school that supports uh, view or parametric, you get a discount on taking certifications? It's about 10 to 20 percent discount, so you don't have to pay full rate. Definitely cool. Um, consider joining InfraGuard.net. Um, this is kind of cool. I um, actually was the past president for three years of the Jacksonville uh, group. Lots of discounts on training and certifications. Ooh, lots of free training once a month or once a quarter. About 10% discount. Oh, by the way, a base clearance. Is that cool, kind of cool? Usually you can't uh, get a base clearance otherwise. A base is base level clearance. And also, <laughs> go to cons. Go and meet people. A lot of great people, a lot of real intelligent people that are in the, um, the community. Getting, getting skills. Um, find a topic you want to learn. We have our little social engineer geek up here. We, <laughs> we have, uh, Gene just took off, huh? Gene basically went off after IPv6 and did some very cool stuff with IPv6. He's speaking a little bit later. He, he went full boat on it. Did pretty much this. Research. Talked to others. Um, Go to both meet space, you know, going and talking to people face to face in cyberspace, ask questions, read books, write code, read code, try things, try it again, try it again, break it a few times because it's really fun, and see how you can fix it. Um, public speaking. These guys weren't public speakers a year ago. Well, okay, Nate was. But uh, they basically hadn't done public speaking. I forced them into public speaking. Get up at a con if you have something to say. Go do the research. Get up at a con and present your ideas. This is real important. This is real important if you want a corporate job or in government. Being able to get up and speak your mind and present yourself well. Okay, so I'm not wearing my typical suit and tie. Okay, it's all black, but you know, you know how that goes. Um, but... Getting up and speaking is real important. Time management, project management, people management. Oh, working with the media. This is real important. Um, a lot of us have to work with the media on a regular basis. You want to present yourself well to the media. I mean, what happens 
Ooh, should I stand up from there? Okay. What happens if you turn around and a media person calls you and go, I don't know. Go ahead. Only you. Um, no, this isn't becoming a media whore. Isn't that great that he does that? Perfect segue. Um, learn how to deal with the media when they call up and say, hey, I understand you're doing this thing called IPv6, Jane. Or you're doing wireless hacking. Can you tell me what the impact for corporations or for whatever organization is? Um, this gives you a chance to understand how to communicate with them because the press has a tendency to twist things. Has anybody ever seen that? Nah. Presidential elections? Oh, I'll shut up. Um, Diebold? Yeah. <laughs> Diebold. That was subconscious. You all now know this subconsciously. Okay. Um, hacking the community. Get out there in the community. Do you know there's lots of professional security groups and other places you can learn things? Um, ISSA, great organization to get involved in. Uh, again, another monthly meeting. These are typically people that are doing IT security for corporations. What a great place to <laughs> find a job, to be able to go to one of these presentations in your area and go, hey, I'm looking for an entry-level job in security. Are you guys hiring? Talk about that in a minute. Um, as is, if you're into physical security, um, Linux. Linux uses group, great organizations, wherever they may be. Um, they're all crazy. Uh, you have to, do you, does all the other Linux users group have Lushes? Do you know what Lush is? It's a Linux users group social hour. We all go out after the meeting and um, participate in drinking Red Bull and um, um, other things. Russian water, yes, it works real well. Um, also, create a crew. Um, the Hacksonville crew is great. These guys, um, challenge me all the time. I challenge them all the time on what they're doing. Create a group of people that uh, can challenge you and educate you and, okay, so drink Russian water with you. Um, also, meet somebody in the media, whether it's newspaper or somebody that speaks on a topic that you're interested in. Email them. Why? You can say, hey, this is what I do. I do security or I do hacking or I do whatever. Who knows, maybe you're, um, you'll get an opportunity to talk to them in a year or two about a story that could get you a job. Um, also, appearance. Here's a big issue. Did you know, and I just found this out myself, so I guess I'm not appropriate here. Uh, it only takes three seconds for people to make a positive or negative impression just by visually. It's been studies that have been out for the last uh, few years. It takes 30 seconds before somebody categorizes you whatever category that they set you at. That doesn't give you a lot of time to actually let people hear what the hell you have to say, right? So um, definitely consider grooming and dressing appropriately when you're meeting some of these people. Um, learn NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Put a great uh, link up here for you guys. Learn how to match and mirror. It's very cool because you can, let's see, let's pick somebody. Johnny, come on up, buddy. A victim. No tongue, okay? Uh, no, I have that <laughs> okay. <laughs> matching, matching and mirroring, okay? Um, so if you can see, I'm not, um, I'm kind of mirroring where he is and physically. It's interesting. Um, yes. Ooh, we both do funny things. There you go. Okay, it's interesting. Um, try this, try this uh, uh, with a few people, seriously. Try this with a few people and find out how it, people respond. Especially people you don't know, all of a sudden they're going to feel really comfortable with you. They're going to say, wow, it's like I know you forever. It's really strange. Anyway, learn how to do this, especially um, in the community. Uh, they'll ask you for a business card and things like that. Oh, I didn't include it. Make yourself a business card. They're cheap. Go get yourself a business card. Okay, you can sit down now, Johnny. You, you've, you've had your limelight now. Um, go out and get yourself a business card. It says IT professional, security professional. Hand the damn things out. It's free. People will start, once they feel comfortable with you, they'll start using your services. Um, 
So anyway, yeah, once you've gotten over the appearance issue, then you can tell people your opinions. Use NLP. This is a great way of hacking the community. I do it all the time. It's Oh, it's so much fun, especially with politicians. Oh, never mind. Um, hacking the employer. This is my fun part. Okay? Is anybody taking notes? Please. This is the important part. Number one, warning. Doot, doot. Okay? HR's job is not to get you a job at a company. They do not care. Is anybody in HR? Damn, I was trying to piss somebody off. Anyway, um, HR, their job is to filter you out. When you send in a resume, if you think you're going to get a job through a resume, if you don't meet with their minimal criteria, they throw it out. Okay, so they have to keep it legally for six to one year, depending on what the legal retention requirements are, but that's a different story. Um, if you don't match their skills, the education, where you live, your certifications, or your lifestyle. Yes, they won't tell you about lifestyle, but yes, I've seen too many HR people from the inside go, you know, they just didn't look right. Oh, well. Um, if you don't fit the company, they're not going to recommend you to the hiring manager. Your job is to get to the hiring manager. That's where you get a job. By the way, that's how I've gotten every job since, well, since before I was called dad. Yeah, okay. Um, go back. Okay. Yeah, long time ago, yes. Um, only speak to the hiring manager. Find out who the hiring manager is. Um, they're the only ones. Do you know they have the power to override HR? Huh. They don't tell you that, do they? <laughs> um, if somebody likes you, if you walk up and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for a firewall administrator. Hey, I'm, I'm interested in becoming a firewall administrator. You know, try me out. The hiring manager has the ability to say, HR, I like this guy. He doesn't have the skills. I'm willing to train him or her. My apologies. <coughs> um, you want to definitely consider um, getting your name out to the um, hiring manager. Okay, next. <coughs> okay. Interesting statistic. Did you guys know this? 80 to 90 percent of all jobs are from referrals or word of mouth. Only 10 to 20 percent are internet ads, postings uh, on the internet, recruiters, and newspaper ads. That's pretty harsh, isn't it? You kind of expected it to be a lot higher, didn't you? Well, let me show you how to get around that. Okay, click. Number one, get yourself a resume. Okay. How many people think putting together a resume was pain? I know I did. Maintain will you stop moving my <laughs> Oh. Damn. You've got my hook um you've got my water. <laughs> Erase that. Oh, and he put <coughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, create a resume. It's a pain. You must have one. It's kind of like a business card. This is what you're going to give the hiring manager. If the again, if the HR person gets this resume, they're going to go, oh, don't like it. Matter of fact, one of the tricks that I recommend to people new in security, hand it to a hiring manager and say, you know, I'm trying to get hired for a job just like the one that you're um. You've got open. Uh, can you give me some suggestions on what I should write down? Do you know they'll help you? It's really cool. Okay. Um, get help from your friends, current employers. Current employers, yes, I'm updating my resume because I want to go into the security phase of this particular company. They'll help you. HR will, will set aside people usually and, and time and give you books and all kind of crap. Um, be truthful. Today... Um, <laughs> if you're not truthful, you will get shut down. There are background checks if you did not work. Uh, by the way, as a side note, make sure you track all the jobs that you've been in, months and years, start and finish, why you left, all kind of fun things like that. Real important. Um, also, be truthful because you get hiring managers like me. Um, I was given a 
a resume of somebody that told me that they did penetration testing and vulnerability assessments, and they said the, the statement was uh, we use ISS for penetration and vulnerability testing. Okay? That's a friggin' scanner. That's a press the button and, ooh, report comes out the other side. Okay, that's not penetration testing. This individual didn't even know the difference. They were automatically taken off my list because they really didn't know what their job was going to be, and they didn't even honestly tell me, hey, look, I want to get into this type of position. I don't have the experience, but I want to get into this position. Um, a lot of hiring managers will respect that a lot more than not putting the information on there. Okay, hacking the employee, employer, okay? Ooh, I started at two. <laughs> Thank you, Homer. <laughs> this is like the 30th time he's done that since the con. It must be the uh, Russian water. Um, two, find the, <laughs> it's supposed to be one, uh, find the companies you want to work for. Did you know there's research? that you can do on the companies you want to work for. Okay, go to my speech last year, and you can do research on it. Or you can go to places like Dun & Bradstreet and say you want to work for IBM. You can do some searches using some of the techniques we talked about last year to find out who is in the security department at those companies. Wouldn't that be handy? That kind of gets around the hiring, the, gets you right to the hiring manager, doesn't it? Woo-hoo! Okay. Um, Find the people uh, in the companies that do the work. Take a look at, uh, join things like um, uh, bug track and things like that. Do searches for people that work for specific companies and go ask them questions. It's, it's interesting how many of them will help you and tell you when jobs are open. Back to your seat. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez, good Russian water. Um, also, um, uh, talk to them, uh, email them, tell them you have an interest, go have a beer with them, go have a dinner, go have lunch, whatever. It's interesting, once you sit down with somebody and you find out who they are and what kind of job that they might have open, you may find it's not interesting or it's real interesting, and just sitting down talking to them, they may give you the opportunity. There's a better chance than not. Okay? Um, during the hiring process, did you know you can negotiate stuff? HR didn't tell you that either, did they? Because it takes money, and they don't want to. They have a budget on what they have to uh, charge. But here's some of the things uh, you can negotiate: pay, which that's what most of us do. Do you know you can um, negotiate benefits? You can uh, days off. Um, I got an extra week this year for the new company I work with, which was kind of cool. Um, you can also ask about cell phones, credit cards, home internet. My home internet's paid for by my company. That's kind of cool. If you're traveling for a company, they'll typically pick up a car for you, which is kind of cool. Okay? So you have to ask those questions. Cell phones, cell phone bills paid for by the company. Ask these questions when you go in to, to be a security professional. Ask those, um, those particular questions because they typically pick them up. After you're hired, um, Please put your cell phones on stun. Thank you. Look, he can count to binary four. Okay. Um, <laughs> good Russian water. Um, find out from the people that you know, your boss, um, after you hire, find out the important people in an organization. Back to your seat, too. Look, he can count to four again. Okay, um, find the people that are important. Get to know somebody in HR once you work for a company. This is actually hacking from the inside. You definitely want to do this. I do this all the time, and it uh, makes it real easy to do the job. Find the boss's assistant and drop her off some chocolate because it's typically a woman. They love you after that. They do nice things for you. It's really cool. Um, training manager, find the training manager because they'll let you beta test new software and new training for free usually. All you have to do is ask them. You can even say, hey, I want to take this particular training course. What's it going to take? Oh, well, we have X amount of dollars in our budget. Are you interested in doing that? <laughs> Free training? Is anybody not going to take that up? I mean, 
expertise. Also, find, especially if you're a security uh, um, professional, find the Unix admins. You're going to have the guru of the Unix admins. Find them within a the company. Become friends. Go drink beer with them. Network admin. By the way, this is based on priority. I have found in the history of working with a lot of people, Unix admins and network admins are really great. Some of the NT admins, there can be challenges because you can say, well, I use Linux. Ugh. Yeah, Linux. <laughs> um, but um, some of the more open mind will uh, work with you. Funny about the help desk people, it's always nice to be able to call a help desk person and go, hey, I've got this problem. They'll take care of it after you know them. Sign up for 401k. Little do they know, uh, or little do you know, uh, oh, what? Does anybody sign up for a 401k in their current company? Okay. Do you know they give you money? They matching money? That's like free? Five to 10k a year sometimes? In addition for your, your five and 10k, that's a bonus, right? In my eyes it is. Sign up for it. It's definitely worth it. And then you can become totally wealthy. Um, sign up for training. Uh, a lot of organizations, as soon as you come on board, ask about their training, where they can get training, free training. Sit down again. Come on. One more time around the lope. Okay. Um, there you go. Next. Hacking you. Okay. This is kind of very strange, but get over it. Um, learning uh, self-hypnotism, great link. Uh, there's some techniques to increase your reading skills and make it easier to deal with uh, sleeping. Um, Knowing your sleep cycle so you don't have to, so some of us can actually get sleep at a time. Yes, that was just for you. Don't you laugh. You drove here. We know what happened to you. <laughs> God help us. If he gets on the road, be afraid. Be very afraid. Um, final word. You guys aren't laughing. Come on. It's not that bad. Uh, final word. Uh, never get convicted of a computer crime if you want to be in the IT security biz. The term duh comes to mind. Um, most of the major organizations, there's, there's a lot of play out in the media that people are going to hire hackers that have been convicted. That period in this industry is over. Plus, you don't want to spend the five years in jail before you get a job. <laughs> Tybo, yeah. Confinement's just not real interesting for me, okay? Um... Let's see, uh, as a security professional, you're, um, you have to file a code of ethics. Yes, you have to deal with that, and also helps with clearances and such. Um, also, this is not a career that you're going to come in, you're going to learn, say, um, how to do this one process every day. This particular career is totally nuts. I mean, think about it. A physician goes, and he learns that the heart's here, the lung's here, the legs are here, things like this. In our industry, they move everything every three or four years. So you've got to learn security over again. You've got to learn new techniques. You've got to learn new vulnerabilities. You've got to, it's, it's constantly learning. Okay, um, This is not a career to go into if you're not going to continuously learn. You'll get burned out real quick. And go do as one of our friends are doing. He's now making candles. He says it's a big chick magnet. <laughs> I don't want to ask. <laughs> okay, and this is what my, my real son hates when I say, with great knowledge and power comes great responsibility, Spider-Man. only reason I say this is not only to tell a story, but also this is real important. Um, you will learn, you will learn, yeah, fictional character. <laughs> um, you'll learn a lot of techniques in this field. As an example, um, if you have an HP Jet, uh, Jet Direct, you basically there's two exploits and you can turn it into an FTP server. <laughs> okay, no big deal for most of this, but as you start learning, you go, oh man, things are even worse. Um, you've got to temper that with your knowledge. Go back, go back. Um, also, I have to do uh, say this because I have to mention one other story. Um, I came to, I guess it was IZ1 and did some lock picking and got myself a set of locks. And my 13-year-old said, hey, Dad, what you doing? He says, I'm picking these locks. He says, wow, cool, how's it work? 
So we turn on TV, and we start passing locks back and forth. And we're picking those locks. We're having a great time picking them locks, okay? Pop, pop it open, pass locks back and forth. His mom walks in. What you doing, Scott? I'm picking locks. Dad taught me how to pick locks. Has anybody ever seen a woman have, like, lightning bolts out of their eyes and stuff? Okay. I was there. I was on the other side of those lightning bolts. Okay. Oh, my God. That was not a pretty sight. Anyway, um, I tell him that all the time. Um, at 13, I've taught him how to do an NSA lockdown on PCs. Little Toad is uh, out making 30, 30 bucks an hour cleaning up people's uh, uh, computers at 13. So, not bad. Okay. No. <laughs> Wife 2.0. Um, how to get there? Uh, set your goals. Just do it. You know, honestly, we, um, we at the Haxonville crew, we actually go to one of two sites. We hang out. We uh, go to Fuel or Starlight. <laughs> yes, we set up their wireless so we had access. And um, we sit there, and we'll have a few beers, and we'll try all kind of things. We do all kind of things while we're sitting there. We had uh, somebody bring a, um, a voiceover IP phone, and we ended up hacking that one night, which was a lot of fun to uh, go over. Um, using sniffers and such. So just go out and do it. Uh, find a crew, find a bunch of people who want to participate, and go do it. And uh, lastly, hey, when you've done it, you can buy me a beer, dinner, whatever, doesn't bother me, uh, when you get there. This is a very cool place to be right now. Um, this industry is totally crazy. There's lots of experts and lots of different specialties. But the parties are great. The uh, uh, Russian water is runs freely. Um, the uh, the things that you learn are pretty phenomenal, kind of scary sometimes, but it's definitely a lot of fun, a lot of learning, a lot of uh, late nights. But um, it's it's a great experience, and you get paid really well. So um, that's about it. Next. Well, he can push the down and up button. Um, Hacking Way to the Job, there's my contact information if you have any questions. Any questions from the audience? We did that with five minutes to spare. Damn it, go out there and do it. It's fun. <laughs> Thank you.